everybody, what's up? Killjoy Jake here, and instead of having friends, I have horror movies. We're talking about the Chuck today, because last week I was kind of on break, so I didn't get to talk about episode 4. We're gonna be talking about episodes 4 and 5 today. Holy F! We're gonna get into this review of Little Little Lies in just a second, but first I'm gonna need y'all to like this video and subscribe for more horror content. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon if you want to see more videos like this. I'm also posting my first podcast publicly, technically, ever. You'll be able to see that a day early if you support me on Patreon. You'll also be able to listen to my Patreon-exclusive podcast, The Afterwrath, where I talk about YouTube tips and also some behind-the-scenes stuff that you don't get to see in my videos. The link for that will be in the description below, and now let's get into it. What's your favorite scary movie? We'll tear your soul apart. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled one good scare, huh? So just real quickly to get into my Chucky, like, episode 4 review, I'm just gonna talk about this real quickly and then we're gonna get into, into the episode 5 review. I liked this episode, the kill was really awesome, Chucky had some hilarious lines, we get to see more into Charles Lee, Charles Lee Ray's backstory, which was cool, but there's a lot I also didn't love about this episode. Like, there is a massive, glaring plot hole that they fix in the laziest way possible. Like, I genuinely think that they got this far in the episode, writing it, and maybe they filmed it too or something, and then they're like, hey, we gotta fix that, because it doesn't make any sense. We don't specifically see Chucky, but we see him running around in the background. We see at least someone who is small, with red hair, wearing the good guy outfit. We even hear Chucky's breathing. Like, we actually get audio samples from Brad Dorif, I think. I mean, I guess that could be anyone breathing, especially a little boy with red hair, who sounds like this. <sighs> That's what every little boy sounds like, of course. And then I think later in the episode they're like, oh wait, we have to write Chucky at the house still, because how did he get to the hospital? He's a little doll, he can't run all the way across town. <laughs> so then they try to fix that whole plot hole by having a little boy with red hair in a, what looks exactly like a good guy costume sitting at the hospital for some reason. And he's got the ball, like that's the, the little ball that got kicked at Jake's foot earlier on, was, was from this kid. and. The, uh, I don't know, like, that is like the laziest thing I have ever seen in a television show to try and fix some plot hole. Like, you could have just not had Chucky run around in the bed. Like, that's such an easy fix. Just don't have Chucky running around at the beginning of the episode. Like, how hard would that have been to just cut that out? You didn't even really need that in this episode. Like, there was so much go cool stuff going on between, like, Lexi and Jake. We also got to see Charles Lee Ray's backstory a little bit. I don't know why they even included that, and then they're all of a sudden just like, oh yeah, we gotta fix this massive plot hole because we need those shots at the beginning of Chucky running around in the background. You don't! You don't need that at all! It didn't serve for any plot purpose whatsoever. I don't know. I, I was I was flabbergasted at that. Seeing Chucky's backstory and like all the awesome new like content from specifically him, Jake and Lexi's characters are great, but god, the writing in this show is just so amateur and so sophomoric. Episode 5 was definitely an improvement over episode 4. I think that there was a lot more cooler stuff going on here. For example, the very beginning of this episode is Chucky getting like thrown into the garbage of the, the hospital and he like falls into this pit of all these like needles with all these all these like leftover drugs essentially and he's just like run, jumping back into it trying to get like a super crazy cocktail going on. That was hilarious. I absolutely loved that. That was like a just a genuine Chucky moment. There's a lot of those in this show. I gotta say, there's a lot of great moments and there's a lot of low moments. Like, it is nowhere in between. It is up and it is down. Every single shot of this of, of this uh, whole series. It's not like the effects look bad or anything like that. It's that there are things that go, either, like, there are scenes that go on for so long that have no purpose. For example, there's a scene in this episode where Jake and his friends are digging through, like, the pile of needles, and this goes on for, like, five minutes, where they're just, like, digging through, like, he's pushing it with a broom trying to find Chucky. Lexi, for whatever reason, has these, like, gloves on and is going through these used hospital needles that probably has a, a crazy array of diseases. I'll tell you what, I would not in any case, <laughs> go through these things with my bare hands, or with gloves on, in the, for that matter. No way, no, no, that just would not happen. And this scene goes on for like a long time, and if you think about it, why did they even have this scene in there? You don't even really need this scene, like once again, and it goes on for a while, like it could have been like a 30 second quick scene if you really wanted to put it in there and it goes on for like five minutes. I, I don't know why. Like, I'm like, why am I watching this right now? There's there's nothing here. It was really cool to see uh, Chucky transfer his soul into the Tommy doll though, which was like, uh, you know, that's a cool reference to like the older movie. Now my question is like, he can still only transfer his soul into like, 
Andy, right? Or because like he transfers his soul into Nika in the last movie, so like technically, would he be able to do that with like this little girl here? Like, is that you know, Chucky logic doesn't always make the most sense. I mean, he's he split his soul into like multiple parts and multiple dolls all over the place. So I don't know anymore. The coolest thing about this episode, though, for sure, is seeing Nika and Tiffany finally in this damn show. I've been waiting for so many episodes now to finally see like what is going on with them since the last movie. We don't get too much of them, but we do learn something about Nika. His character that like she's still in there like she is still a part of that herself <laughs> and Charles Lee Ray sure he has taken over her body essentially but he uh, she is still in there and uh, sometimes comes out when she gets cut I guess is that that's kind of like she accidentally cuts herself with a knife and then she's like she comes out she's like oh oh god <laughs> So obviously that's going to play a huge part in like the massive climax of this season, I'm assuming. That's going to be really cool to see what happens there. And of course, it was amazing to see the absolutely gorgeous and amazing Jennifer Tilly on screen again, playing the bride of Chucky, Tiffany. She has some whack lines about food though, let me tell you. <laughs> she is she is real hungry in this scene. It's, it's kind of funny. And Fiona Dorif gets a massive plus in my book for basically playing two characters. She's not only playing her dad's character, but like another character on top of that. That's so cool to me. She's a phenomenal phenomenal actress, would love to see her in more stuff. We also get some more background into Charles Lee Ray's past. Like, for example, we see him looking like Tommy Wiseau picking up some girl at the bar, and then you find out, oh, it's Tiffany Valentine. Okay, that's sweet. And then when Tiffany kills for the first time, she just all of a sudden has a, the, the, the Jennifer Tilly voice. I don't know, you know what, it's fine. The dubbing on the show is not fantastic either. When they're having this, like, conversation at the very beginning of the episode, the girl's voice is, like, one level of volume, and then, uh, Brent Tor voice, which is clearly dubbed over this actor's uh, mouth or whatever. It's just, it's so much louder. So she'll be like, she'll talk and she'll be talking to him like this, and then you'll yell, oh, hey, hey, baby, I'm Chucky. <laughs> and it's just so much louder. It's like, dude, what is the the editing, the writing? It's so weird, man. I, I don't know. There are some things about the show I absolutely love, and there are some things I absolutely despise. I don't, it's so back and forth, like with every other scene. I Like, it's so cool that we got to see a, uh, the past for Charles Lee Ray. We're seeing into his past, seeing what he was doing before he became Chucky. But then it's like, there's some some amateurish mistake that is gone that has gone into this. For example, lazy writing in episode four, the dubbing being just a little off. Like it's a little off. It's a little too loud at points, or it's a little too quiet sometimes. I don't know. It's so. It's so weird. It's I've never seen anything quite like it. It feels like there's a lot of hands in this pot trying to like pull this series one way or the other, and I feel like if just Don Mancini was doing it, it would be phenomenal. I love what Don Mancini does with those movies, where it's like there's this childlike sense of like horror and gore and like fun, cha chaotic fun. It's such a good mix, and then you also have like this touch of social commentary in some of the movies, which is so cool, and it's done very well in those movies, I would say. And here, and in this show, you do kind of get a lot of that chaotic fun from the from the like the past movies you get little moments of that for sure but then there's also just like these amateurish mistakes that it's like you shouldn't be making those kind of mistakes this late in your career and I don't think it's Don Mancini's fault at all it's the sci-fi network which is just uh infamous for making just like lower lower tier stuff that like great concepts like that day of the dead show for example I don't know if anyone else is watching that but like cool concept obviously it's like kind of just writing off of the name because god it also is just not written very well whatsoever. I just don't love what sci-fi does with these awesome ideas for shows. There are so many things that go to sci-fi for some reason, and like you hear about them, you're like, this concept sounds amazing. It's gonna, this is gonna be sweet, but then it's done by the sci-fi network. So it's just a little, like it's just so average. Everything they put out is just so average, which sucks. Like if this was like a Netflix original, a Hulu original, uh, somewhere, maybe like one of the streaming platforms, this would be so much better. But it feels so sci-fi because of these little amateurish mistakes. It's not Don Mancy it is someone else behind the, the lens at sci-fi. Because on paper, this series should be fantastic. I mean, Nick, Nick Antosca is a producer on this. Don Mancini is, of course, heading this and, like, in charge of all the creative shits. They're using mostly practical effects, which is awesome. But we're five episodes in, and I'm still getting disappointed by, like, little tiny things within the episodes. It's so... It's, it's really frustrating sometimes. In the little preview for next episode, it looks like we're finally getting our first shots with Andy Barkley. We're finally going to find out what happens after 
that cliffhanger at the end of uh, the last movie. I'm very excited to see that in the next episode, but what did you guys think about the last two episodes of Chucky? Leave me a comment about it down below. Thank you all so much for watching this new review of the latest episode of Chucky. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror contents. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Just look up Killjoy Jake and I'll come up. Please consider supporting me on Patreon as well if you want to see more videos like this. The link for that will be in the description below. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.